Yo, what's up, Brad? Okay. Okay, I think I can start this now. Okay, so <clears throat> last night I said I was going to make a video on. By the way, let me know how sound is. Um, game versus. Uh, game versus my voice, because that's a thing we're going to be talking about too. <clears throat> is uh, audio versus video. Um. Okay, so basically, this is a tutorial by myself about S-Video stream setups and uh, what to do and not to do, <clears throat> basically. Um, so I have my S-Video pulled up. Uh, first thing you need to know about uh, S-Video setups or any setup in general is that you need the correct cables and hookups hookups I guess if you want to call it that um, so basically what we want is the first thing on the list down below to do what I'm doing is you want a double ended AV or S video cable so what that means is you want a, a cable that has red, white, yellow, red, white, yellow, and then S video and S video. So it is literally double ended, the same thing on both ends. AV, S video, AV, S video. And if you're running composite, you just need the red, white, yellow, red, white, yellow. Um, so right now, I'm currently running an S video. Um, and how I do that is I have to have an S video cable which brings me to the second one an S video cable for my console so my console uh, cable has red white yellow and an S video output on it <clears throat> so I run from my TV with the double ended and my console with the S video red white yellow into three splitters now your TV needs to have an S video support so it has S video red white yellow on the back or front or wherever it is that's for S video for composite it only has to be red white yellow you need an old OS or SD an SD OS capture card um, unless you have some sort of like HDMI adapter hybrid type thing which I know some people have that, but you don't, that's not what we're talking about right now. Um, video and audio splitters, they have a male end and two female ends. So it's gonna have, it's gonna be a three prong thing. It's gonna have a male, and, or it's gonna have a male and two females on it. And you need red, white, and yellow of that. So you need audio and video splitters. I'm also running my game feed through Amarek, which is a video capture software. I also should have wrote down one thing. Hold on. I'm going to add it here. Things to make it look really nice. Uh, um Codec. Or legs okay so um, I use Amarac 3.10 or 3.10 I guess you could say uh, that's to my knowledge the most updated Amarac and then with Amarac you want to download this thing called Lagareth codec or legs for short and that's going to help with your screen encoding and the scroll blur and all sorts of things. So you'll have almost no scroll blur. And be sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash Um So okay, so the first step in getting your stream set up <clears throat> is you want the cables from your TV, the double-ended coming from your TV into one end of your splitter. Then you want your console 
to go from your console cable into the other end of the splitter and then the two S videos meet. So from your TV, your console, to the splitters, to the capture card that I use, which is the GV USB 2. So there's three ends to the GV USB 2, and there's four ends. There's an S video, a red, white, and a yellow. And you're going to connect all three of those via the splitters into the GV USB 2 and the S video into your PC, which is going to allow you to have game feed like we do over here. This thing. Okay, so when you have all that and you open up Amarek and you set it to S video, it should work. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between S video and composite, and I'm going to show you different settings within that make a huge difference. Okay, so right now I have a modified S video output going through my Amarek with legs and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly what that means. So I've pulled up this list here of the different graphs inside of Amarek and the con uh, configuration options. So the first page in general, it doesn't really matter. It just shows you what's what Amarek is about, your language right here and stuff down in this corner. And then you have your other settings, your mouse settings, and then your file settings. Uh, path, file name, and then other things, show tools, tips, show hotkey for menu sound. That's just stuff that's like personal preference. You don't really need to mess with any of that. Mouse setting is just, you know, wheel up, wheel down, setting all that stuff. It's not really a big deal. Okay, so graph one. Always, your capture card that you are using, you're going to want to highlight your capture card. And like I'm kind of, I know I'm kind of giving you like an Amarek tutorial now, but this is all really important. Um, versus composite here, so you have your video capture device, which will be your capture card, and then you have your input, which is either none because you wouldn't have any, composite or S video, depending on if you have an S video setup going. And then you have your format, which is just going to be like the frame rate you want to run at your width, your height, and your frame rate. And uh, since we're running an old school console, I always, there, there's different settings you can use, but I've always found the most success with W equals 720, H equals 480, because that's like regular format for old school games. Frame rate is 30, but you can set 60 FPS somewhere else in MREC, which we'll be talking about. Your audio capture device is gonna be talking about what audio your Amarek is capturing from, which is obviously going to be your GV USB 2 or your Aver Media, whatever you're using for your SD or HD capture. And then sample, that's just like you're not going to ever have to mess with that. That kind of just one option so you don't have to touch it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what you do on page two here, graph two. Um, you want your custom ratio, if you want to set up 16 by 10, it's completely fine. 4x3, 16x9, depends on what you're using or what you're playing with. Your underscan, you know, I always do underscan. Um, it captures both top and bottom rather than left and right. Old school games, it's a lot easier to do. It looks a lot better. Deinterlacing, always do top field first. Um, it helps with um, blur and codec issues. And it really makes your game feed look really clean. It'll always... And like deinterlace the top field of the game feed and that's what's most important um, function for old school games like Super Nintendo um, anything like N64 maybe even Wii and below Nintendo N64 Super Nintendo Wii any like AV driven console uh, you want to go retro game uh, what this does is it sets the game to not have a shaky screen because for PlayStation if you have it set to retro game for some reason the, it'll cause screen shake no idea why it just happens like that um, and so you always want to have it set to retro game for me for my PlayStation 2 and 1 stuff like that that uses a different kind of AV uh, not that it's so much different but it's just like the console itself uh, I always set it to a role-playing game or else you'll have a shaky screen and that eliminates that. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, your cropping, you won't have to crop it because you can obviously do that in 
uh, OBS or XSplit, whatever you're using. Split rotation, you don't need to even mess with that. Scan line doubler, don't even need to mess with that. Okay, now this is what the deinterlacing is basically telling you is going to happen. Uh, interlace to progressive, so basically it's going to go from you having a lot of screen scroll issues where it's going to become blurry to you being able to have a clean and effective scroll on your screen. Okay, so graph three just basically shows you some settings about your frame rate, your output line, audio settings is just set to normal because you have it running through your GV USB 2 or Avermedia or so and so. Uh, your mic should just be whatever mic you're using. Just put that in through OBS or whatnot. Uh, you want to have live enable set because that allows you to it allows your computer to actually and Amarac to actually know you're trying to capture game feed. So that's what you need to check to make sure that your game feed will actually show up in Amarac. Frame rate I set mine to 60 because I like a nice clean flow. Um, and then you obviously want to set your um, resolution here to the resolution you use on your stream, which mine is 1280 by 720. Uh, that'll change differing if you go 16 by 9 or whatever. So audio settings, like I said, don't touch it. Mike, don't touch it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go over to preset. You don't need to do anything here. Recording, this is where it's kind of important. Okay, so you have your uh, audio compressor, which... I always leave it uncompress and I always set this to 128. Um, it's just your bit rate and that should be pretty much always set to that because anything higher could bog down anything lower. It's just like always try to keep that as low as possible. Plus your bit rate shouldn't matter because you, if you set your bit rate different in OBS it'll change every time so it's not like that matters. Okay, when you download Lagerith Kodak, it should show up in this this little bar right here. It should say lags. And this is super important because this single-handedly encodes all your screen scroll and it should make everything look a lot better. Um, if you don't have this, you're going to have a lot of screen scroll blur and that's just it's just going to look like crap. But if you get this, it'll look a lot better, trust me. Um, it's great so you definitely want to get that so you make sure you have this checked once you download it and once you automatically download lags onto your computer it should automatically read it in your Amarec options frame rate obviously is 60 timer you don't have to touch filter you don't have to touch you don't have to touch any of this stuff down here but buffer size you always want it to be 1024 type long time path Z that shouldn't really matter too much screenshot obviously you have your hot keys you have your advanced you have your about Okay, so something important to uh, talk about here. Um, so we have our settings right here, composite and S-video. Um, I'll show you what your game feed will look like in composite versus S-video here. All right, so what I'm actually going to do first is go to device setting and uh, there's going to be a little list well, let me see if I can get it here. Add window capture uh, properties. Boop. Okay, let me actually pull this up. I don't know why it's doing this kind of crap. Boop. Pull this up. Okay, so we have our properties here. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go to video proc amp. And what this is going to do is allow us to set our brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, sharpness, gamma, white balance, um, backlight, comp, and gain, and power line frequency, which is anti-flicker, which doesn't matter. We don't need that. Okay, so right now I currently have my settings set to this. These are custom settings. My saturation is higher to add some color, and I added some sharpness to 100 to make it so when I up to the saturation it didn't blur it too much and for me this looks really good um, I didn't touch brightness I didn't touch contrast this is what I did right here so I just turned saturation to 200 sharpness to 100 so we're gonna go default here and what I want to do is I want to 
take these off so you can see exactly how this kind of affects. So I'm going to switch it to default and you're going to see a little difference in the color and the saturation and the sharpness is going to drop dramatically. So hit default and like right there you can see that the color kind of thinned out, it lost its touch, it kind of lost how bright it was and it just kind of, it kind of flattened out. Um, it still doesn't look too bad but compared to what it was it, it's not that great. <clears throat> so this is your standard S video like output and it's not bad it looks pretty good we're gonna go composite now I'm gonna show you exactly how big of a difference this makes okay so this is this is composite and comparatively you can see that it's the background is a little shaky scratchy doesn't look as clean and when I move around you can kind of see a little bit of blur going on. Um, I'm also going to take off, especially actually in the pause menu, you can see it. The background does not look clean. There's supposed to be like brick like blocks that are going on inside of the map here. And I'll show you exactly how much it makes a difference. I'm going to apply it back. And bam, you can see that there's actually bricks in the back and it looks nice and it's clean, but yet it's still not as sharp as we want it. <clears throat> so having everything kind of balanced out the way you want it can make regular S video look even better. So we're going to go back into our uh, options list here. I'm going to pull up my options. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it back to S video and I'll apply it. I'm going to go back into these options and set the the saturation back up to 200. And I want my sharpness to be at about 100. There we go. I'm going to apply it, hit OK, and then I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see that the colors have brightened. You can see the bricks even better now. Um, it kind of it it brightens all the colors, adds sharpness to it. And now it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to show you ex what it looks like without the lags codec as well. Um, so we're going to go back into our settings here and I'm going to actually just shut off lag codec. I'm going to use an AMV4 video codec and hit apply. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see it too well. But you can tell that like when it scrolls, it's kind of shaky. The background starts to get kind of shaky, <clears throat> and it um, it kind of shakes everything that's in the background because it's kind of encoding. It's encoding oddly, and it, it you can tell way more when you're going fast that the screen just kind of starts to blur, and it's it's not really noticeable. But if we turn on the lags codec, it becomes a lot more noticeable how much of a difference it is. Everything's a lot cleaner in the background. It's not as shaky. It's not as blurry. And that's something important to keep in mind. So with all these settings, um, you can get your game feed to look pretty immaculate. So this is for Super Nintendo. Now we're going to take a jump into um, PlayStation. I'm going to show you a little bit more of an idea what I mean by sharpness and adding basically your own custom settings to your S-Video. Um, so one second. We're going to get rid of the Super Nintendo here. And I'm going to plug in my PlayStation here.
Sweet. We got it. Okay. So, um, you may be able to tell there's a little bit of screen shakiness going on here. This is the first thing we were talking about earlier about setting your game to retro versus um, role-playing game in the Amorex settings. So you, here's a great example of seeing that like the screen is shaky. There's a lot of a uh, lot of this going on, and it's not needed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Amorex settings. We're going to go to um, Graph Two here and see Role Playing Game. We're going to click that. And we're going to click Apply and OK and it's going to make it so there's no more shake and it looks pretty decent okay so it looks good looks pretty tight okay so now Mega Man X4 is a good example um, and I'll show you why Okay, so I'm going to pick X's campaign here. And uh, there's one specific thing that really kind of shows off. Alright, so look at X here. This is kind of what I gauged my customization options off of. You can really bring out the color and um, the sharpness. So we're going to go back and I'm gonna, we're going to look at original S video default settings um, so we're gonna go into device setting okay so this is basically this is what I set it to we're gonna go to default and set it back and this is what's gonna happen okay so it doesn't look too bad there's a little bit of blurriness going on but if you were to just look at this at face value, it's not bad at all. But I'm going to slowly add saturation to it, and I'm going to slowly add sharpness to it. So, slowly adding. So, we're going to get to about 200 for saturation. And you'll notice that the colors are brighter but it's it made it blo like more blurry so I'm going to slowly add sharpness here and you can kind of see it kind of coming together starting to get better starting to get better starting to get better and that's where I have it set Okay, so take a good look at this, and now I'm going to hit default again. You're going to notice just a color drop, sharpness drop, and it's kind of just going to become washed out comparatively. That's default S-Video right there, which if you're just plugging S-Video in, looks pretty damn good compared to composite. So basically, it's just all about setting up your Amorac settings and your colors and saturation, hue, contrast to what you think fits your stream. In my case, I like my games to have a little bit more color and um, just basically overall look clean and sharp. So I'm going to apply this. Another example of this too, where you can really see it, is in the main menu when you select uh, when you select either zero or X I look at my TV screen and I see that the colors are nice and bright but when I look at the game it looks sort of washed out so like I said here's another good example everything's looking really nice I, I look at the red and zeros helmet as well it's nice bright almost cherry red and that's how it should look, because on my TV it looks like that. And I'm using a Sony Trinitron. So those are pretty nice TVs, so I want to get it as close to that as I can. It's a nice cherry red. 
and now I'm gonna drop it down to regular default and that kind of turns into like a grayish red so like I said if you want to use my settings that I have um, that's completely okay like I said I have it set up to where my saturation is 200 I'm gonna set that up a little higher here and my sharpness is going to be 100 I'm gonna apply it okay okay drop this out and it's gonna look nice cherry top tier great game feed everything sharp you can see everything there's no blurriness um, we have the lags codec on that looks really nice so there's not going to be any screen scroll blurriness or anything of the sort and that's just a good a good solid few steps to make your game feed look dope as hell and as you can see if we select we'll select zero here it's especially really important for uh, PlayStation because it has a tendency to want to be shaky even when you're scrolling. It just looks really good. There's no like screen scroll, blur, or lag, or anything like that. It's just nice game feed. Pretty much the closest you're going to get to something that's kind of RGB related. It just looks really nice. So, right colors, good sharpness. These are like small little steps to help you have the kind of game feed quality and stream quality you want without spending tons of money like the the cable to put into your console is probably I don't know, like a console cable with S video is probably like six dollars splitters are like three dollars a double-ended S video cable is like five dollars at most, you're going to spend 20 bucks to get really, really great quality. So, just something to think about. Anyway, if you like the video and the stream, be sure to follow at twitch.tv slash Coyote. This has been the S-Video stream setup tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoyed And I really hope this helps because I've had a lot of help from a lot of people. Shoutouts to uh, Crystal Unclear, actually. Who, uh, you should go follow him, twitch.tv slash Crystal Unclear. He helped me big time with learning how to set up my stream and just over the course of messing and tweaking with things I found out how I like my stream to look so but again this is Stunt Coyote I really hope this helped and I will see you guys later peace